Welcome back to our Med Smarter Lecture Series, where we're taking a smarter approach to preparing future physicians. Before we get started, if you'll take just a quick minute and click that like button, and also subscribe and turn the bell on so that you'll be notified when we post new videos. Let's talk about the major histocompatibility complexes. Uh, we have major histocompatibility complex one and two. These are all encoded by our HLA genes. And what they do, how they function, is they give antigen fragments to T cells, and then they bind to the T cell receptors. Okay, You can see kind of in this little drawing over here, this red uh, spot in this drawing is going to be a peptide. Uh, it is being taken in by the major histocompatibility complex protein, uh, and it is attached to the cell membrane over here which will then in turn present those fragments to T cells and the T cell receptors. So let's talk about the different components from the histocompatibility complex one and two. So I'm gonna to refer to both of these as MHC1 and MHC2 from now on. And we're gonna talk about uh, where it's located, the binding site, structures, expressions, functions, antigen loading, associated proteins uh, in this particular chart. So with MHC1, the loci here are going to be HLA A, B, and C. All right. When we compare that to MHC2 in just a minute, you will see that there is one distinguishing factor, and the thing you need to know is that MHC1 loci have one letter. That's going to be one way that you can easily remember this. If there's one letter, HLA, HLB, HLC, or HLA, A, HLA, B, HLA, C, then that is a MHC1 component. These bind to the TCR and CD8 receptors, and they are made up of a long chain and a short chain. What you'll see here is that it will express on all nucleated cells, APCs, and platelets with the exception of red blood cells. So how does this work? This is going to take are endogenous antigens, so viruses, cytosolic proteins, those kind of things, and it's going to take it to the CD8 cytotoxic T cells. Antigen peptides here are loaded onto the MHC1 receptors at the rough endoplasmic reticulum, and off after delivery via the transporter associated with the antigen processing. Proteins that are associated with MHC1 are the beta-2 microglobulins. So let's compare this to the MHC2. MHC2, like I said, we are talking about something that's not one letter, because the MHC1s are one letter, H-L-A-A. -A. With MHC2, we have two letters, so that makes it easy. Two, MHC2, two letters. So we've got H-L-A-D-P, H-L-A-D-Q, and H-L-A-D-R. Uh, the binding site for these are the TCR and the CD4. The structure of the MHC2 compound is two equal length chains. It is expressed on APCs. And its function here is to present exogenous antigens, so bacterial proteins that are outside of the body, uh, to the CD4 helper T cells. The antigen loading occurs following the release of invariant chains in an acidified endosome. And associated proteins here are the invariant chain. So let's talk finally here about the HLA subtypes that are associated with uh, diseases. So HLA A3 is going to be associated with hemochromatosis. You can remember that as HA3 kind of begins that hemochromatosis uh, word there. B8. HLA B8 is associated with Addison's disease, myasthenia gravis, and Graves' disease. So remember this as don't be late. So late sounds like eight. Uh, Dr. Addison, or else you'll send my patient to the grave. So remember my patient to the grave. So we've, we're talking about B8 or B late. Addison's disease, myasthenia gravis, and Graves' disease. HLA B27 here is going to be associated with psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, irritable bowel disease associated arthritis, and reactive arthritis. 
So we can remember this by using the term pair, P-A-I-R. So that's psoriatic arthritis, ankylosing spondylitis, irritable bowel disease, and reactive arthritis. These are also seronegative arthropathies. Psoriasis here is associated with HLAC. Don't really have a good mnemonic here for you, so uh, you're just going to have to remember HLAC is associated with psoriasis. HLA DQ2 and DQ8, these are going to be associated with celiac disease. Uh, you can remember this as I8, so HLA8, 2, HLA2, much gluten at Dairy Queen. All right, so gluten is associated with celiac disease. Dairy Queen is your DQ, so DQ2, DQ8. HLA DR2 is associated with multiple sclerosis, hay fever, lupus, and good pasture syndrome. And you can remember this by using the mnemonic DRIVE and DR specifically here. So DR2 is our HLA subtype. DRIVE2, multiple hay pastures. So multiple sclerosis, hay for hay fever, and then pastures for good pastures. You'll also have to remember there SLE is also associated here. HLA D3 is type 1 diabetes, lupus or SLE, Graves' disease, Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and Addison's disease. So remember 2-3-SLE. Right? So in this case, you can actually help out remembering that SLE is in DR2 and DR3. So DR2, DR3, SLE. HLA-DR4 is associated with rheumatoid arthritis, another type 1 for diabetes, and Addison's disease. And here, the mnemonic is going to be there are four walls in one room. All right, R O O M. We're using a different term or a different spelling here, uh, so that's going to be rheumatoid arthritis with D R four. And finally, H L A D R five is associated with Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Remember this: Hashimoto's is an odd doctor. All right, so odd. What are odd numbers? H L A D three and H L A D five for Hashimoto's thyroiditis. So H L A D three and five gives us Hashimoto's thyroiditis, and those are odd numbers associated with Hashimoto's disease. If you found this material helpful for your studying, please like and consider subscribing to the channel. Also, share this video so that more people can benefit from it like you have.